So we just got back from a little trip to Tormina, Sicily. Now Tormina is a very beautiful place and it's worth visiting if all you do is go to the ancient Greek theater, which is amazing. But like a lot of very beautiful places in Italy, Tormina has a lot of tourists and those tourists come with tourist traps. It's a trap. Our trip was a rude reminder that as amazing as the food of Italy is, you can't always just expect to walk into any old restaurant in any old city and have an amazing meal. If you don't know what you are looking for, maybe you will go back home uh, completely disappointed uh, by the food, even if we have the best food in the world. You'll go home and think, what are Harper and Ava raving about? <laughs> so we thought today we would go over some of the top travel Italian food mistakes that I and a bunch of other people have made, and in some cases I continue to make. So the first mistake, and this one I really made on this trip, doesn't sound like it's related to food at all, but it is, and we'll explain why. And that mistake is traveling in August. Ava, why is traveling in August um, unadvised? I would say that usually traveling in August in Italy is completely forbidden. <laughs> <laughs> Coming in Italy in August is very bad. All the people in August here in Italy, we are on vacation. So you will end up having a lot of tourists in the most beautiful places. The August vacation thing in Italy was very unexpected to me. I really didn't understand it until I experienced it. I mean, everyone's on vacation. All around Ferragosto, which is the 15th it's of the August. The 15th of August, where every single Italian is on vacation. But I always thought, like I knew about that day, you had told me about Ferragosto, but I thought like, oh, it's a day. No, it is, it, it extends out into this holiday that's basically the whole month of August. Because it's like, uh, I'm so sorry, when uh, is a holiday in Italy, it doesn't mean one day. <laughs> no, it never does, and I should have known. So I made this mistake because I booked this trip without talking to Ava. Uh, <laughs> and I thought, oh, it's the weekend after Ferragosto. That'll be fine, Ferragosto's over. No, it was not over. Just the line to get on the ferry to go to Sicily was just like miles of standstill traffic. People were just getting out of their cars and going to like get a coffee because we were all just sitting there for so long. And the reason why this affects the food that you will eat in Italy is because for instance, in Tormina, there is one thing in particular that I like to eat there. One thing, it's the one thing that I look forward to. I'm like, oh, I get to eat this in Tormina. And it's the granita with brioche at this particular bar, it's called Bam Bar. It's really amazing, really good. But the problem is a lot of people know it's really amazing and really good. We went there the first day, line just out the door. It was going to take hours of waiting. We finally gave up, we said, we know. We'll come back at 7.30 in the morning the next day, the moment they open. Nope, line all the way around the block. We went every day we were there. I never got my granita. So if you travel in Italy in August, you might miss out on the very thing that you wanna eat. You can't enjoy a place uh, where you have uh, to be constantly in line to do everything you want. The second mistake that I used to make a lot before I met Ava was expecting to find all of Italy in all of Italy. Do you know what I mean by that? Yes, I don't know what you mean. You mean that uh, as an international tourist, you come to Italy, you end up in Rome, and uh, for example, you're craving a cannolo. And you expect that you can walk in every pastry shop in Rome and find an amazing cannolo. Eh, no, <laughs> because cannolo is from Sicily. So if you want really a good cannolo, you should go to Sicily. 
then this doesn't mean that in Rome they don't have, but maybe there are two or three specific places that they make a cannolo as good as in Sicily. So in this case it's very important that you learn maybe a little bit about the food of the city or of the region where you are traveling. Because just in that way you are sure that you can experience the real food of that place. Let's say if you go to Palermo and you ask for a carbonara, maybe I will avoid to go to Palermo and ask for a carbonara. And you'll see them on menus all the time. There were so many restaurants in Tormina that had like carbonara. Oh, but it's a carbonara with onions in it. Hmm. We saw also tagliatella alla bolognese. Alla bolognese, yeah. Again, as you said, it's not necessarily that it's bad, but the chance of it being very good is not super high, and you are much better off if you know some of the regional foods that you can look for. But how do you know what the regional foods are that you should look for? Well, obviously, you can watch more Pasta Grammar videos because we talk about it all the time, and Ava teaches me all these amazing regional foods. But there's another thing that you can do that I've found quite useful, and it seems really obvious, but people don't think to do it. How would you maybe learn if you had no idea and you're visiting a place what some of the regional food is? The first thing uh, is uh, ask to the person who knows everything, which right now is uh, Google. But then uh, pay attention because if you ask Google in your own language, you will end up having the answer in your own language that doesn't mean that it's the right one. So please ask Google, but in Italian, for example, if you want to know where, uh, uh, what's the traditional, I don't know, dish from Milan is, uh, write uh, cosa si mangia a Milano. Or, or maybe a simpler one is piatti tipici di Milano. Piatti tipici di Milano, piatti tipici della Lombardia, piatti tipici della Sicilia. And yes, the answer uh, will be in Italian, but then Google can help you to translate. Now that you know what dishes you're looking for, you gotta find a restaurant to eat them in. Here's what I used to do before I met you. First of all, I would go onto Yelp. Now already right off the bat, I've learned something about Yelp. We don't use Yelp in Italy, or we don't use Yelp as much as you use in the US or in the rest of the world. I feel like um, TripAdvisor Trip Advisor is used more than Yelp. Anyway, small tip, Yelp isn't used super frequently by Italians, so not the best source. But I would go on and I would of course look for like places to eat and I would read reviews in English because that's what it default showed me. And I would base like where I picked a restaurant on that. Big mistake and one that once again Despite totally knowing better, I made on this trip, we were looking for a place to eat and I was Googling and I found this place that had really good reviews, but all of them in English, but the reviews were so good. I was like, oh, come on, this place must be good. And we went there. I've never up to this, up until this point had microwaved pasta in Italy before but I had it there. Because here the question, Harper, is uh, why have I let Harper do all this mistake? <laughs> why I didn't... Uh, why didn't you stop me, Ava? Because I'm too respectful. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, okay, we can go try it. Mm. So once again, this is a good time to maybe try searching in Italian. Dove mangiare a Tormina. You might have to do a little extra work to translate the results, but it's definitely worth it because you will get reviews from actual Italians and probably be better off than if you search in your native language. Even if uh, you try to search in Italian, it's also real that also the result in Italian sometimes can be tricky. So some tips to understand where you need to avoid a restaurant. The first one is when a restaurant has, uh, I don't know, like, 
10,000 uh, uh, dishes, uh, 10,000 offers on the menu. Mm -hmm. It's not possible that a person who is the chef can cook, I don't know, 20 first course, uh, 30 antipasti, 25 second course, uh, and they are all amazing. It's not possible. So, longer is the menu, worse will be. And definitely avoid any place that like does a mix of different like okay if they have like a hamburger on the menu plus traditional italian food stay away if they have pan breakfast pancakes on the menu stay away if they put balsamic vinegar on the caprese stay away <laughs> we could go forever on like warning signs about restaurants this next mistake is real hard this one's tough because there are uh, a handful of foods that everyone wants to try when they come to Italy and for absolutely good reason. And we have to sit here and explain why you should not try them. Here we can say that, for example, you are like Harper. Harper loves tiramisu so much. Now, the real tiramisu, also for the Italian standard, is more or less, uh, I don't want to say an expensive uh, cake dessert to make, but it's not very, very low cost. Because of the mascarpone. Because of the mascarpone. For a restaurant, a mascarpone is a cost. And they, how can I explain? They never make it right. <laughs> That's how you can explain it. No, there are, it's theoretically possible that if you go into a restaurant and order a tiramisu, they will make it properly with mascarpone. Sometimes, for instance, we wanted to do tiramisu on the pasta gram tour, and we have to specifically check with the restaurant and ensure that they know that we are expecting a real tiramisu because normally they skip the mascarpone and they just use whipped cream. I've ordered tiramisu in restaurants all over Italy from north to south. I try them wherever we go just to see. I'm trying to prove Ava wrong. Not once, not once have I gotten a real tiramisu. But that's not the only one. There are quite a few foods that are really like homemade foods. And even though they're so classic and everyone wants to try them, they're really not something that you should order in a restaurant if you want to be sure that you're going to get something good. Think about panna cotta, Arbir. Panna cotta. Everyone knows panna cotta. Now, if you go to a restaurant and they have a panna cotta with frutti di bosco, cioccolato, caramello, these are the three national topping for Italian panna cotta. You are 99% sure that that panna cotta is pre-made because they sell the box in Italy <laughs> of... Uh, it's like a powder? Yes, with the same toppings. So because a restaurant needs to work, uh, it's like uh, they can't spend the time actually to make a proper panna cotta, to make the proper topping. So they try to find a shortcut. So I would avoid like things like tiramisu, things like panna cotta. Cannoli at restaurants, not a good idea. Except uh, if you are not sure 100% that is maybe a Sicilian restaurant and actually yeah. they treat the cannoli properly. Because in that case, yes, the cannoli it can, can be, be good, amazing. Yeah. But if they're like little cannoli that have been sitting filled forever. Other notable examples are like, for instance, lasagna. You would never really order lasagna in a restaurant unless maybe you're like in Bologna, in which case, okay, you gotta try the lasagna. But otherwise, that's just like such a homemade food. It will never come to my mind to go to Milan and order a lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The other very notable example that's worth pointing out that we, as a rule, never order in a restaurant or even buy in a store is limoncello. Limoncello 
is uh, something that in Italy we do a ton because we have a ton of wonderful lemons most of them they grow in our garden so they are organic it's very easy to find also the alcohol to make the limoncello so it's something that we try to we do at home now the homemade limoncello is one thing it's amazing the store-bought limoncello is just uh, a ton of sugar with some drop of lemon essence and i'm not sure that uh, put they put alcohol inside <laughs> because sometimes it happened to me in the past to put the limoncello that someone gave uh, as a gift to me in the freezer and it freezes mm, so yeah. everyone knows that alcohol doesn't freeze real limoncello is strong it's sweet, but not super sweet. The stuff that they sell is just like, it's just like simple syrup. It's like drinking corn syrup with lemon flavor. Hey, if you like it, if you enjoy what you find at a restaurant, that's all that really matters. But in general, we just skip it. There's also one food that should definitely be avoided at all costs, and that is anything that is not in season. Our product, most of them, not all of them, well, most of them, uh, they follow the season. So They're you, very locally sourced. So you can't expect, for example, to eat asparagus in uh, July. Nobody has asparagus in July in Italy. As you can't expect to eat uh, good fresh mushroom in uh, January. Nobody has a fresh mushroom in January. So try to follow the season, like having, for example, mushroom in fall, uh, asparagus in spring, uh, air chokes more or less from January to April. Uh, don't look for uh, good ripe tomatoes in January, you will not find it. <laughs> the last mistake that we're going to talk about is super specific, but it's very necessary to discuss because it's related to a food that everyone, for good reason, wants to try and should try when they come to Italy, and that is gelato. So when I first started coming to Italy, before I met Ava, I obviously wanted to try the gelato. Everyone knows in Italy, you gotta eat the gelato. And I chose it based on the only way I thought I knew how, which is how it looked. And so I would go, I was like in Rome and you see these amazing gelato places where they have just these incredible mounds of colorful, smooth gelato. And they have all these amazing flavors. And that's what I would get and I could not have been doing things more wrong. The gelato, to be good, it needs to be natural. Now, if I go in a gelateria and I have in front of me a wonderful green pistacchio, that more green I can think of, that is not pistacchio. <laughs> Real pistacchio is brown. <laughs> pistacchio is brown. Pistacchio is like a brownish. Sometimes it can be a little bit yellow. So don't mix all these color foods you because they are not real. They are used just food coloring to make things look better. When actually the best think is when maybe the color is not so beautiful. It's, it's honestly, it's the gelato that looks the worst that will always be the best. If you see those big mounds that almost look like a, a sculptor shaped them, that is like they have pumped a ton of air and crap into that to make it look that way. What I look is the number of the flavor which means that if I go in a gelateria and I find also there 100 flavor, I run away. Maybe a good one, you should have uh, like six, seven milk-based flavor and uh, five, six fruit-based flavor. So the, your choice it should be, how do you say, limited. Yeah, they do fewer flavors, but that means that they actually do them well. Okay, now that I've opened up with you guys and shared with you some of the top travel mistakes that I've made here in Italy, uh, I wanna hear from you about what are some of the travel mistakes that you used to make, or alternatively, in the place where you live, what mistakes do tourists make when they come and visit? Actually, this will be very interesting to know. 
yeah, give us some tips so that if we come visit where you live, <laughs> we're a little bit more in the know. We've talked a lot about the regional food of, of Italy, and speaking of the food of Sicily, where we were, look at these incredible cannoli that a pasta grammarian made. They look amazing. They deserve to be in a Sicilian pastry shop. Absolutely. If that's what I got on a menu, I'd order that all the time. Me too. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Follow us on social media, at Pasta Grammar, and we will see you guys next time. Ciao. Ciao. I was about to say like, oh, it's too bad that there isn't, uh, that there aren't more like restaurants where you can just eat like Nona's home cooking. And then I realized I'm sitting in one. <laughs> I'm literally sitting in one. <laughs> we are pretty lucky. We're, we're very lucky. <laughs>